Imagine being separated or losing your entire family and friends. And in one minute, you lose all your possessions. The entire community that I'm supporting in Greece is experiencing this now. There are approximately 100,000 people that are displaced on the islands of Greece and on the mainland. Many of those people have been there for over three years. Before I came out here this evening, I just heard that the refugee school and the law clinic are burning on the island of Lesbos. In 2015 of September, I was based and am currently based in Frankfurt, Germany as a flight attendant for United Airlines. Although I'm from Durango, Colorado, I've always loved to travel and I decided to move abroad. I saw on television how thousands of people were fleeing from Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan. I had no idea about the situation, but I started to inform myself, and I simply went to ask. I went to the local train station, and I brought a car full of clothes and asked them if I could stay and help. I also speak German, and so it was very valuable to have a translator. Every day off since then, I was spending my days off helping distribute, translating, and learning a little bit more about the people that were fleeing. I felt that Germany was very well suited to handle the situation. They were very organized, they had the resources, and they worked very closely with the refugees, making sure that they were learning German, that they were supplying them with the best needs that they could be met, and also helping them to find jobs. So I decided to carry on, and my first stop was a small village in Austria named Nikolsdorf. There's just over 800 people there, but at one point, we were getting 20,000 refugees per month. It was then that I realized that my life would never be the same again. I watched the people coming from Hungary, from the borders of Hungary and Austria, arriving with exactly what they had left their countries with, flip-flops, T-shirts. And I remember vividly this young boy, about three years old, and his father. They were both wearing flip-flops, and I scrambled to find the little boy a pair of shoes. I could only find some three sizes too, too big, but I gave them to him nevertheless. And I remember the big smile that he had when he left because he had experienced kindness, something he hadn't seen. One of the first refugee camps that I worked in in Greece was Idomini. There were 15,000 people that were displaced because the borders were closed in 2016. I started to work with different NGOs, nonprofit, uh, non governmental organizations, and I was helping to distribute and to give the people clothes and shoes. But what I realized is if I'm going to help these people, I want to be able to speak with them and understand them. So I broke off from the other groups and I organized my own nonprofit here in the United States. Every day off, I would go to Greece and spend as much time as possible. My first project was going from tent to tent and just sitting down with the people, enjoying a tea and listening to them. If I look back on the last four and a half years of my volunteering experience, I would say that the best and most valuable tool that I've learned is just to listen. I learned so much by listening to them. I had a 14-year-old translator with me from Syria, Mahmoud. I'm still in touch with him today. He spoke perfect English. He understood the people. 
And him and I worked night and day, case to case, tent to tent. We sat down with the families. One man came to me distraught because he hadn't spoken to his 11-year-old son in over a month. He was in Germany with a foster family, but when he called, the man wouldn't let him speak because he didn't speak German. I made the call on behalf of the family and pleaded with the man to let him speak to his son. I said, we're in a refugee camp in the middle of nowhere near the Macedonian border, and the family only wants to speak to their son. Two minutes later, the little boy says, Papa, I put the phone on speaker, and the family cried. But we were able to connect them. Every Monday, they were able to call, and I was there to help them. We then formed a small group with five volunteers, one woman in Denver, three volunteers in Athens, and Mahmoud and myself in the Akavala camp. We had to pick out the most vulnerable people, usually women with small children, families with small children, and those with medical situations. And we created a project to take out those families and put them into homes in Athens. We spent the next one and a half years, early in the morning, taking the families out with their belongings, getting them on the bus to Athens, and giving them key to a home. We gave them a monthly food stipend so they could buy the food that they wanted and let them make decisions. We were able to take out 38 families during this time. With another organization, Cribs, in the UK, we were able to take another 10 families out. All of the women were pregnant. We continued this work for two and a half years in that camp. And during that time, I brought paper and crayons into the camp for the kids. I realized the day that I brought those materials that that was life-changing for our project. The children were so calm, they were so happy. And when I saw what they were drawing, I was just floored that they were so traumatized. Many of the children came to me and they couldn't even speak. So we began to use art as a way for healing, as a way for communication. And one day, we put a couple of those pieces of art on Facebook, and everybody wanted to purchase the art. Since many of those families were standing two hours in line for a small box of orange juice and a croissant, I thought this is the best way for them to be able to earn a little bit of money to support themselves. So we were invited to Boston for our very first exhibition, bringing the art to people to show them about the story in Greece, to sell the art, and giving 100% back to the artist, the little artist. Since then, we've helped thousands of people. We've taken the art to approximately four continents. Tonight is our 110th event around the world in the last three and a half years. Thank you. We've seen women that were not allowed to paint in their countries and were suppressed. We're able to give them art supplies and let them draw freely. We're seeing children that can't speak and that are deeply traumatized. And once they have these materials, they can heal. We see young men that are put into prisons in Greece for having second rejections. When they come out, they're depressed, they're hopeless. My answer to everything is art, because it has healed them. They turn around, they, they're able to survive again. One young man that I met a couple years ago, Niba from Cameroon, he had an art background in his country. I heard about him from a lawyer on the island of Chios, and she asked me to meet him. So I brought 
a bag, which is a gift bag that we distribute all around Greece. It has two canvases, two brushes, and a box of high quality acrylics because they deserve the best. And I gave it to him and I said, in your time, paint when you, when you feel up to it. He was sharing a tent with five other men and he said, it's not possible at this time, but I will be in touch. Because he had the tools again, two days later, I got the most beautiful photos of his art. We rushed them to San Francisco to our upcoming event, and they sold straight away. I called the lawyer that had recommended um, him to me, and I asked her if, he, if she could find him an apartment. And in such a quick amount of time, we were able to get him out of the camp, place him into his own apartment, using the money that he earned. So everything that we do, we love to, get, we love to be the bridge to support these people, but we want to give them the decisions, their independence back, and to empower them through their own creative ways. Not less than two months later, Niba was our teacher in our workshops. He was giving positive feedback to the adults, doing one-on-one -on -one workshops with many of the refugees, and helping us with our children's workshops as well. His art is now in Denmark, America, and Europe. So with all of these exhibitions, we are trying to share the world, to the world about the situation in Greece and to be able to support us in Greece. Everything that we do, we're trying to support the local community. It's been very difficult for the Greeks to have so many people in their country and there's no plan in sight. So we do everything we can to support them. We are always trying to go to communities to share this message because we don't know when we speak to children at two years old or to 10 years old or to university students how this will affect them. We've seen other students come to me and want to start their own organizations. So it's all about planting seeds. Last month I was in a a school, an elementary school in Virginia, and I told the children, no matter what your idea is, make sure that you discuss it with your family and your friends and your teachers, because a small idea could help save thousands of people. When I started this project with paper and crayons, I had no idea that it would change the lives of thousands of people. But I do have to thank so many different communities around the world. Once we were invited to the Boston um, exhibition, NBC was there to report on it. And it was amazing because after that report came out, I got messages from so many communities around the world inviting us to speak. I go to these cities, I don't know the people, I don't know the schools or the, or the churches, but I'm so welcomed to come in to share the story. They welcome me into their homes, they help me with the art, with the setup, so they're getting involved as well, and it's so important to see that. Because we can't wait on the governments, we can't wait always on anybody else to make these changes. We have to, as individuals, as citizens of this world, start to think about innovative ways to help the person next to us, to help a, a refugee in Greece, to help the person next to you, and to create a better world for everybody. Many of the children that I've helped in the last three years are still writing to me after all of this time because of the impact that art made on their lives. One little boy called me last month 
and he was so happy to share with me that he had his own closet and that he could finally be in a football team. It was his biggest dream. But the one thing that I took from that phone call that was so special, he said, and I'm still the best artist in the world. <laughs> and that's what I do. I always try to tell those kids, you are the best artist, you are valued, your art is important, and you are important. And those words are sticking with those children because we have to support these children of tomorrow. No matter if they're here or if they're in a refugee camp, those children are our future and we have to do everything we can. So I urge people here, even though Greece is so far away, press the government, press your leaders, try to make changes in your local communities. And thank you to all of those communities that have invited me to your cities and to your churches because I can't do this alone. It takes a global collaboration. Thank you so much.